I told myself I wouldn't spend so much on books and yet here we are so um <laughs> hi guys what's up it's me Chrissy and I'm here with a book haul um I don't know how many books I have some are magazines some are magazines um without further further ado I guess let's just get into it so um let's start what I bought today today I told myself Christina don't buy a book you can you can pass by book sale but you cannot buy a book you need to save and then so I was there and I see all these great titles and I'm just like mm -hmm, I'm strong I am strong and I don't need that I don't want that and then suddenly my attention lands on this spine and I am shook and that is Maplethorpe by Patricia Morris Morris Rowe Morris Rowe this is a biography of you guessed it Robert Maplethorpe and this isn't one about you know how like there's just kids which is like written by Patti Smith and it's about her relationship with Robert Maplethorpe well this is actually an entire biography with pictures and it's um I don't know where you'll find here yeah, there and um I don't know um where what was I gonna say I don't know I'm like half asleep right now but anyway um this uh is the uh, the writer the author um had access to a lot of people Robert Maplethorpe knew and she interviewed him as well so apparently and when I looked at the Goodreads the script um, rating for this everything was like practically four stars and up so I was like yes so I got it and thus crumbled my will to save anyway um so besides that I don't know when I got the rest of these I just know I got them um the Paris Review, um, it features these people. I just got it because like um, we don't get a lot of these here. They're not published like regularly or, or anything. But I just kind of want to read articles and essays that aren't books. Um, because there are a lot of good like literary magazines and whatnot. And I think that that's important too besides novels and things. So there we go, the Paris Review. And... I think at the same day, oops, I'm shaking my camera. Just be gentle. Okay, um, I got the New Yorker. This not necessarily because I found anything nice about what's in here. I just really like the cover, so I was planning to use it for like bookstagram stuff. But yeah, I think it's beautiful. So there. I'm being honest with you. That yeah sometimes i do judge stuff by the cover i mean who doesn't we see things first before we hear about them um i found a nicer copy of wise children by angela carter my other one is like it looks like it's gonna crumble in my hands but this one is a lot more sturdy and it's got like this at the back so it's pretty good and then um the other last january I was like in the bookstore right I'm always in the bookstore I mean like let's let's face it um and so I was like browsing and then I see oh way of shadows oh Brent Weeks and it's oh oh book one that's great actually because usually I find book three book five or whatever and then you never see book one you see it like two years later and by then you don't want to read it because you there's like you know it like the time you wanted to read it it's not there so I was like wow it's here that's great I don't have to like spend a lot mass market but oh well you know and then so I flip it open right and then I'm like why is there writing there why is it right under the name wait a minute is it signed I was like and then I actually googled it and then I looked at I compared the signed uh, photos with this and I'm like it's signed oh my gosh this is like the first time I found a signed book in book sale by the author usually you see, you see dedications right like oh this for your for loved ones and things but this one though like I was shocked this is the same place where I found the Maplethorpe book but different days and then as I was checking out I was like hey what's that and then I found and then they I thought it was um, reserved so I was like 
is this reserved? And she's like, no, 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 it's for sale too. And then so I was really blessed to find Dashiell Hammett's The Maltese Falcon. And I, I think I read somewhere that you don't have to read his stuff in order because it all makes sense anyway. And compared to how expensive it is on like a nicer version, this is only 15 pesos. So yes! Dashiell Hammett, I wanted to read him ever since. Like I read Lillian Hellman's uh, biography, autobiography, memoir. Yeah, and then um, found Liza of Lambeth by W. Somerset Moem. Thank you, Dane, for the correct pronunciation. Um, and Henrik Ibsen's A Dollhouse and Other Place. So I don't know. I don't really remember why I got this one. I just was like, oh, place. Place. So place. Um, I'll unwrap this later. Um, I was able to find online um, Tennessee Williams' cat, cat on a hot tin roof. I think I remember watching a few scenes of this with like Elizabeth Taylor in it, and I was just like really drawn to it. But at the same time, I changed the channel. But now that I have the book, I want to read it first. So cat on a hot tin roof. And um, I found Last Exit to Brooklyn <laughs> by um, Hubert Selby Jr. Apparently this is a cult classic. So I'm really kind of looking forward to this. And um, uh, I found The Sympathizer by Viet Thanh Nguyen. I watched Winner's review on this and I was like, you know what? Yes, I need it. I need it in my life. Because I would, I'm really interested in seeing how like other Asian countries also kind of view the Philippines because, um, yeah, it's just interesting. And then, um, thanks to the same, I think it's the same online, no, 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 it's a different online bookshelf, bookshelf, bookstore <laughs> that I found this one in, and that is The Essential Ginsberg, edited by Michael Schumacher. So this has, um, his 16 pages of his personal photographs, songs, essays, poems, letters, journals, and interviews. Ginsburg. So I'm very much looking forward to reading that. And the other other day, I decided to have coffee with my book BFF because he's leaving the country soon. So I was like, you know, we should hang out. And of course, when we hang out, where do you think we go? We went to we went to a cafe first, and then we went to the bookstore. He just saw things on the shelves and started handing handing them to me, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, I'll get it." Like, what even is my life? He just gives me things, and I just get them. But like, yeah, he's got a great eye for things. Um, so I found Half a King by Joe Abercrombie. Actually, there was a the paperback edition of this, but the reason why I got this instead is because. The map looks a lot better than the paper than the paperback one. So yeah, I always thought this was an adult fantasy. Turns out it's like YA or something. So that's interesting. And then I found a uh, Robert Louis Stevenson Black Arrow in the Penguin Classics edition. I will not lie. I I was drawn to like oh Penguin Classics, and I'm like oh Robert Louis Stevenson. Hmm. But um, apparently this is a series of, um, this is pretty much like a series of short stories or like um, a series of stories that came out weekly or something about a guy who fell in love with a girl during the time of the uh, War of the Roses. Uh, something like that. And then there's like a mercenary group called the black arrows i don't know have you guys read this i don't know i'm just sort of skimming it right now i remember why i bought it when i bought it but like I, it's been like a month since i like actually looked at it and then i also found the rules of attraction again by brett easton ellis this however is a better cover so i'll keep this and i will sell the other one now for the last thing that i got that it's it's one book but what is it? Oh, I know. I remember what this is. I remember what this is. Yes. 
Um, so randomly, I was just in the bookstore, like like I always am, like I live there because I live there. Um, and I see this huge chunker on top of the stacks, and I'm like, well, I have to move that, right? So then I just, and then I was about to move it, and then I see it says the Playboy book of short stories. So I'm like, okay, yeah, Playboy. Mm. And then I see names like Jack Kerouac, John Updike, Joyce Carol Oates, Vladimir Nabokov, Norman Mailer, uh, Jorge Luis Borges, uh, Paul Thoreau, Joseph Heller, Jay McInerney, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And then I open it, right? I'm like, well, that is an amazing list of contributors, right? So then I open it and I flip through the contents and you see Herbert Gold, Richard Madsen, Ray Bradbury, James Jones, Roald Dahl, Shirley Jackson, blah, 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 like Philip Roth, uh, mm, Ursula K. Le Guin, Haruki Murakami. Um, I don't think Neil Gaiman has one in here. I'm not sure. But I know he doesn't. But I was like, what? So it turns out that when Playboy started, they had a re they reprinted um, short stories that were already printed before. But then, as they grew in popularity, a lot of authors decided to submit their short stories to Playboy in a way to break off from these sort of family-centric uh, magazines that they were sort of forced to write like in the 50s or whatever. And so, because of that, now there's this huge collection of short stories by all these amazing authors right here in my hands for a really cheap price. And then. When I met up with one of my friends, she was like, I really want that C. And I'm like, well, you can borrow it. I'm not giving that up, that's for sure. So yeah, that's it. That's, those are all the books. I'm not going to lift them. They're too heavy. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Let me know what you think of the haul. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, see you guys next time. Bye.